And I said, well, let me tell you what I tell them. And she was so mad at that moment, she just stormed out and didn't even listen to anything I said. But what I talked about was this foundation that early on in my career I started to realize. And part of it was is really building the right foundation around your business. And it's not, no, no one will say, oh my gosh, this seems so magical. How did you come up with it? But every single thing we do inside the organization, it doesn't matter whether you're a visitor here or whether you're someone in the company, you can know that every coaching session, every single uh, training, every single thing we do is built on this foundation. And yes, it's more, and it's been refined and it's been, uh, you know, changed here and there as time has gone on. But it was shortly thereafter where then I found myself on the other side of the coin, losing listings to her. And I was highly frustrated. And so I sat in another conference room, but this time I was alone a little bit more humbled by the factors of the fact that I was losing when I was going out on presentations. I was not taking the listings. And so when I sat down, I wrote down, I wrote this question. I said, what is it that top producers do? And from that moment on, I started to pay attention as to what is it that the individuals who are succeeding at the highest of levels, what is it that they're doing on a daily basis? And so at that moment, I still, in a journal in, at my home, in a closet in my house, it sits those words on it, about these six things I want to bring up to you and share them with you again. And they sit on a sticky note. They are on three different sticky notes that are put together. And it was a defining moment of my life when I realized that I had to work from what most people do in this business. They work from the outside in. They look for solutions all outside of them. And really what I realized at that moment is I was going to work from the inside out. And since I chose to do that, it's had some nice payoffs, and it's been, uh, you know, hasn't all gone perfect. I mean, some of you have seen the highs and the lows of, of what this organization has even done, and even in its infancy when it was created. And uh, look, I mean, some of my most difficult times, I've always been able to go back to this foundation and say, all right, why is this not working, or, or better yet, when it's working, I'm able to predict and know why it's working. And so for me, this foundation means everything. It's my lifeblood. It's the foundation I work off of when things are going well and when things are not going well. And it's my checks and balances that I don't have to go to a seminar. I don't have to have someone else go tell me something. I can just look at it and take, like, a, like I'm at a doctor's office, evaluating right before the checkup. They ask you about the problems. And I can do that with these six things. And it, it really has become that important to me. And it doesn't matter whether I'm selling real estate. It doesn't matter whether I'm a broker. And John and I have often the opportunity to speak in other organizations that are not even real estate related. And it's the same principles that apply. So with that, let's just talk about this foundation just really quick. So number one on this foundation, and it's not going to come to any surprise, but again, it's just an order. And that is number one, is living life with a deep sense of purpose. And what I always say is that, look, the, the, and you guys, you've got some extraordinary people in here. And I say to the agents, and yes, you are extraordinary, but these are the kingpins of the world when it comes to selling and or building real estate organizations. When we talk about building teams, you're surrounded right now by individuals who have built some of the largest real estate teams in the world, not just three or four people, thousands of people. I mean, Bill, how many offices do you have? 96. 96 offices is how many Bill has. I'm excited because we have 18 now. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it's just crazy, you know. I mean, I mean, I look at these guys. We paid 33 million dollars in commissions. I look at Todd and Mary Lynn back on the East Coast, and you guys did what 80 million dollars worth of commissions last year. Real estate and mortgage. Right. I mean, crazy numbers, guys. So just you, you're around people who understand that you have to have, you have to know your purpose. And you have to know where you're heading. So the thing that I, I have to talk about is that this is your destination. And you would never get in a car with someone, especially if you knew them, and not ask the question. You go, they pull up at the front curb of the office, and they say, get in. You would be asking, they'd be asking the question, or you would be, where are we going? So I just would challenge you that, look, in your business individually, you got to know where you're going. you got to know how many deals you're going to do. You need to know how much money you want to earn. And then have one or two other goals. And then there's, we need to go deeper into those, those purposes that drive our life, that make us work hard and make us do more than we normally would do. So let's not spend too much time on that because I want to rip through these and I want to run that. But number two would be this. We've got to have those goals like I just mentioned. Remember, the goals 
are not the stepping stones. I talked a few weeks ago at the summit. I said, look, none of you on your deathbed, deathbed are going to go, oh, man, I'm so glad I have so much money in the bank. That's a goal. The purpose is usually, again, drive around relationships. They drive around freedom. They drive about around giving back, helping others. They usually do. That's usually what the driving purpose is of most people's lives when they take a step back and they evaluate what is most important to them. The goals are nothing more than the stepping stones to getting to your purpose or helping you or assisting you with your purpose. And then the second part of that, right, is you have to have a clear plan. And look, without a plan, it'd be like going out and on a piece of uh, property saying I'm going to build a home and not have a blueprint. You've got to have a plan. And the third part about that is that you've got to, got to have a schedule. And I know that none of this, for many of you, you may say, oh, it all makes sense. But what I can, I find over and over again, and it doesn't matter who I'm around, is that when we forget our purpose or our destination, we become empty inside and everything seems really empty. And then the second is that when we don't have goals and plan and schedule, our day becomes consumed with things that don't make sense and don't bring us closer to our objectives. So don't underestimate the power of purpose, goals, plan, schedule. And then the third is making sure that you clearly are doing one thing, and that is you've got to protect your mindset. So remember the question that I asked. What do top producers do? Well, look, I'm certain that I don't know a single top producer, right, that does not know their purpose, does not have a clear goal to plan a schedule. And you know what I've realized is that mindset and their confidence is there. They protect it at all costs by what they're either reading, what they're watching, what they're listening to, who they associate with. All of these are factors that are things that protect your mindset. So my challenge to you is today, what are you going to do to protect, to elevate your mindset? It's one thing people say, well, I don't watch the news. I'm more interested in not what you're not doing. I'm more interested in what you are doing. What are you doing to build your mindset, to protect it, to elevate it? And then the fourth is making sure that you have the skill sets. Now, we won't go through them all, but there's 12 distinct skill sets that we need to have. This business, and what we always talk about is, look, there's nothing about this business you cannot learn, and there's nothing about this business that you cannot do. So it's just skills. If you aren't having the success that you want right now, it's nothing more, nothing less than having the skill sets that you need to do it. If you want to elevate your ability to sell a higher end home, your ability to sell more homes, to earn more money, it's nothing more, nothing less than elevating your skill sets. So my challenge to you is focus on what you need to learn because skill sets, and you think of again about a top producing agent, they absolutely unquestionably have the skill sets to close deals, to give a presentation, to do a pre-qualification, to pick up a phone, knock on a door, set an appointment. They have that ability. It seems like common sense, but there's really just 12 of them. You master the 12, you make a fortune. You don't, you'll struggle. Don't underestimate the power of your skill set. But you know what? The best way to improve your mindset, the quickest way to improve your mindset is what? Improve your skill sets. You want a great mindset? Get better at what you do, and your mindset will follow. Always does, always has. All right? And then number five is we need to make sure that we have the discipline in place. So look. As we look at this whole deal, the discipline is the key ingredient to your success, right? I said there's nothing we can't learn, but we also have to do the things that are necessary. So some of you get that, some of you don't. But sometimes we live our lives as if we're going to Las Vegas. It's as if we go down and say, hey, we're going to go put down a dollar of effort and think we're going to get $50 back in results. It's not reality. What you give is what you're going to get. So we can't underestimate the power of doing things. Action, work, work ethic, discipline of doing more of what you say you're going to do. Here's a place right here if you want, right by Russ. So as you go through this process, just recommend, re recognize that discipline, though, lastly, is fueled by your desire. So if your desire is weak, if you really don't want this, a lot of people will say, well, I want it as long as I don't have to work real hard. I'd really like to have a lot of money, but I just don't want to have to work real hard to get it. So just don't underestimate the magnitude of importance that your destination or what you desire most is the fuel behind your personal discipline. You know, I remember years ago, I remember uh, my, uh, my daughter. 
She's 16 now. But when she was about, I still remember, 11 or 12 years old, I would always have to do this. I would have to say, or even and my wife Jennifer, I'd have to say, Ashley, did you brush your teeth? Oh, gosh, I forgot. So now think about this. There's discipline, but there's accountability. And I always think about accountability as being from the outside. Discipline is usually from the inside, or we could call it self-discipline. And everybody wants self-discipline. They want to just simply say, you know what, I'm going to do it, and then they actually do it. But my little 11, 12-year-old daughter back in that day, she needed accountability. I needed to say, hey, did you brush your teeth? Did you brush your teeth? Did you brush your teeth? Did you prospect? Did you prospect? Are you going to prospect? Did you prospect? How many appointments did you set? That's the reason Dave and Russ and John and Lindsay and Rick and others in this room, the reason why they're always asking you what you're doing is because you need accountability because that's what we do. That's who we are as a, you know, a human being. But then my daughter met and figured out there were boys in the world. And then all of a sudden, magically, overnight, it's as if self-discipline took over. And she never ha I never have to ask her, ever, at 16 years old, I do not have to say, did you brush your teeth? <laughs> never. So just think about this. Embrace accountability. Embrace people helping you. And there will be a moment where maybe you'll move to your life where you don't need someone holding you accountable. And you have the self-discipline. Some of you are exceptional <coughs> about that when you go to the gym. If you have someone who meets you at the gym to help you hold yourself accountable, outstanding. Some of you go to the gym and no one has to show up with you. That's okay, too. It means you've mastered that angle of it. But accountability is something we should embrace. It's from the outside, right? It's from the outside. But when we're self-disciplined, it comes from the inside. And both are important. But those who are mature enough in this business, those who I consider to be the top producers, understand what they are highly disciplined and will do without anyone telling them, and they become highly accountable to the things that they know that they know they should do, such as prospecting, and they have others hold them accountable to it. That's business maturity to me. It's not weakness, it's reality. People always ask me, why is that such a problem? I don't know, you're a uh, human? I don't know, <laughs> right? So as you think about this, just recognize that discipline and accountability are part of the weaving and the ingredient of your success. That's what top producers do. And then last but not least, let's put it over here, number six, so others can see it, is just making sure that you build the right systems. Now look, because we're all cut of the same cloth here, um, there are organizations out there that are red in color that like to sell you on the idea that the system is more important than all of these other things. And I'm telling you, Systems and strategies, as important as they are, you will never be forced to do them until the volume is there. What I find is so often is that people try to create the system before the volume is there. They put their focus on a system when their focus should be on their mindset. Don't put the cart before the horse. But remember, to do high volumes of business, there's no question the system has to be in place. But the system is a byproduct, or the creation of the desire to create it is a byproduct because you have volume in your business. So, yes, there'll be systems like lead follow-up, maybe even the system of your mindset, how you chart that course every day. But don't underestimate the power of this foundation because it's the checks and balances. When things are off, you can easily see it. And, and just closing this up as we wrap up this morning, I still remember there's, you know, 10 things we talk about with mindset. I remember sitting down years ago with Joanna Williams, some of you know her, and I remember Joanna sat down with me. She said, oh, George, she goes, I just can't figure this out. My mindset is so off. I mean, last year I made $225,000. I still remember the conversation. And she said, I can't figure it out. And I said, well, let's talk about what you're doing to protect your mind. What are you doing to elevate your game? And she said, well, I'm coaching. I said, okay. And, and she actually couldn't name anything else. And so I went through a list of 10 things, right? I said, what did you read today? What did you uh, watch today? What did you participate in? What trainings did you participate in? Who did you spend your time with? What did you write? Did you write in your journal? Did you review your business plan and your goals and your destination of where you want your life to end up? You know, did you did you uh, uh, did you meditate? Did you visualize? Right? Did you get coached? Oh, she goes, oh yeah, I did. I'm, I'm being coached right now. 
He said, so out of those ten things, I, and, I, and this, he said, out of those ten things, we wrote them all down. I said, out of those ten things, how many do you think I did today? And she said, I have no idea. I said, well, you know, let me tell you. Every, it was like one or two in the afternoon. I said, every single one of those I've done so far today. And I said, and you have one thing you've done today, and you haven't done any of them in the last week, and you're expecting the recipe that you would have a strong mindset. Look, guys, guys this is a learn and do type of business. There is nothing in this business you cannot learn, and there is nothing in this business you cannot do. So my challenge to you as we wrap up this morning, we hit up some uh, affirmations, and then we'll do some... Uh, 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 role plays and we'll read some scripts and things like those who stay. Just don't 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 underestimate the power of this foundation. If you took any top producer, if I take Brian Noel right there, right? Brian Noel earned give or take a half a million dollars last year. I know he does so many of these things. Does he do it perfectly? No. No one ever does. But if he never loses sight, then the next place will be the 750s, the million dollar incomes, if he refines this foundation. Because again, there's nothing you cannot do in this business. There is nothing you cannot learn. And if you keep that in mind, you just simply keep building that foundation and take your business to the next level. Okay? Deal? Yeah. Deal. All right, here we go. Let's rock and roll. <coughs> All right, here we go. I, I succeed because I have the I'm an optimist. I like talking to new people. I know what's important to me. I remember people's names. I'm very really glad I'm following. I'm passionate about real estate. I love this in my greatest form. I like asking questions listening. I enjoy making sure to put my sales skills. I love seeing my emotions back to the home. I promise to run my dream family. My first place is not to quit. I improve my skills daily. I'm happy. I love the confidence and the beat of my business. I see my future as awesome. I love my life. I'm grateful and thinking. I enjoy my thinking. I believe in me. I feel like I'm steady. I use my voice to stop and I feel like I'm I feel like I'm I feel like I'm I don't know what I live. I've been making the beats. People love me. I love it. I'm a guest for a I guess my dad, my big sense. I trust the data. I set up my potato. I'm a master of space. I achieve my goals. I'm a real estate rock star. And I'm passionate about my life. I live every day to purpose. I promise myself skills. I know my destiny. I'm out of being strong. I'm out of power. want to stay, I'm what I mean by that, I'm not agents, of course, stay, but those who are visiting us on the, on the broker side, um, this is Jeremy Laguerre, 
Uh, he's the general manager, oversees all of our, our broker operations and whatnot. And so those of you want to you want to stay for a few minutes in this room, you can stay for 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, we'll do a few scripts and dialogues here. And then, uh, Dave, you can take it over for just a few minutes, but then just be available by about 845. I know some of them also, Jeremy, wanted to be able to get into a conference room. So there's the conference room uh, up here and then second floor. And then obviously, they can use any of the offices upstairs in the staff area. Okay. So, so maybe if you're visiting and you're not staying here, maybe just join me out in front of the elevators. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, Mary Lynn, you're staying here. So, but, you're, but those of you, and then Jeff, if we'll, we'll stay, Jeff will stay here for 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll, when I, I'll leave in here, I'll walk out in about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, let's, here we go, let's stand up. Let's, uh, All right. let's, uh, so, uh, if you don't have a script book, and then Jeff, here's the script books up here. Uh, very late. So, why don't we just, let's, uh, let's, uh, like we normally do on Tuesdays, we've been doing, is just reading through just the different scripts. Uh, let's uh, but let's just start. Let's just do the listing presentation. Let's start with that very, very first. All right, page sixty. Page sixty. And then Bill, here's another book if you want. All right, here we go. Knock knock. Hi. Hi. Thanks, Thanks again for having me over. I'm excited about getting your home market and getting sold. Do you mind if I take a quick look at your home? I wrote down three very important questions for you. Number one, do you actually have to sell this home? Yes, fantastic. And number two, will you price your home to sell? Or do you want to keep it on the market for a long period of time? Price to sell? Great. And number three, do you want me to handle the sale for you? Yes, excellent. All we do is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? Yes, it will. Sign the contract. George, at the end of my presentation tonight, one of three things will happen. Number one, you'll have the opportunity to list your home with me. Or, number two, you'll decide not to list your home with me. Or, number three, I'll decide not to take your listing. Anyone is fine. Let's quickly take a moment and review the questions I asked you over the phone. You no. said you were moving to L.A., right? You said you were moving because of the job transfer. You said you had to be there in nine days, correct? You'd like to price your home at $300,000, right? And you said you owe $100,000. Is that right? Now, you weren't planning on selling it yourself, were you? Terrific. Are you interested in solid financing, or do you want your money out? Wonderful. Now, there are only two things you have to look at Number one, your motivation to sell this home, and number two, the price you set out of your home. I prefer what we call comparative market analysis. There are two parts to this research. Part one, we call fantasy land. It's what we're going to list for. Part two, we call reality. It's what real estate agents listen to cell phones for. We're going to have to decide tonight where you're going to spend your time. The purpose of a comparative market analysis is to determine the value of your home in the eyes of the buyer. Do you know how buyers are for value? Buyers are for value by comparison shopping. They look at the price of your home based on its features and benefits and compare it with the features and benefits of similar homes that have sold recently or are currently on the market. Does that make sense? Good. For example, if you're going to purchase a new car and one dealership had a car for $20,000 and another dealership had the same car for $20,000, but it had a CD player and which car would be more valuable? Why? What if the first dealership put the car with no CD player and rims on sale for $15,000? Which would be a better value then? Why? So, you can see, if you want to increase value, lower the price, or have more features and benefits for the same price. Does that make sense? Good. So, unless you're trying to get more features and benefits to your home, are you? No. Price is the only issue. May I show you what I mean? This home is just like yours. How many bedrooms? How many baths? How many square feet? Do you know this neighborhood? Have you seen this house? Your house is better. This house is a little better than yours. And this house is very similar to yours. What price are they asking? Look how long it's been on the market. You need to be an LA on the days, right? What price do you feel when you choose to create value in the eyes of the buyer and get someone excited to buy your home versus the competition? Now that you've seen these prices, I'm going to recommend a price of $275,000. Will you, George, list your own fee for that price tonight? All we know is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? Yes, it will. Sign the contract. All right, let's stop there. So let's let's, let's get in a circle <coughs> in the room. 
some of you know what we're going to do here just real quick. Uh, we're going to techno dance in the middle. Just <laughs> right. Jeff, you're first. All right, so, um, so what we often will do is we'll get in a big circle, and then here's the deal. We'll pick one objection. So if you want to go to page 66 in your script book, and, of course, and look, just so the record, because I know some of people ask, I don't care. I, 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 I've said this for a long time. Uh, scripts don't fix the human being, if that makes sense. I'm going to say it as politically. That's not how you say it. I, I, I don't want to say it. <laughs> script is not, scripts do not fix jackass. If you're a jackass, that does not, script does not fix that. All right? So, look, it's the same reasons why different scripts can be used. I have not connected, committed. It doesn't mean one iota to me what script you use, uh, just as long as it works for you, and that's fine. Uh, you, you'll see that as we are in a company, we'll practice lots of different scripts. Uh, some of them are Mike Ferry. The ones that we just did are obviously Mike. It means no, nothing to us individually or personally as a company. We just want to make sure we're using things that we know work, have success, bring confidence to an agent or to you as the agent. So with that, so um, oftentimes we'll chant these scripts and we'll, we'll role play them out, but what I want to do is uh, this is your chance uh, to pick on him? We're gonna pick on. We're gonna pick on. What's your name? Chad. 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 We're gonna pick on John Sia. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so we can demonstrate first what he's gonna do. But I'm gonna be his role play partner, meaning that I'm going to be the agent. Or not the agent. Sorry, he's gonna be the agent. I'm gonna be the the, the warm and fuzzy <laughs> friendly client. Yeah. He's thinking of a new objection as he goes. <laughs> no, no. So here's the deal. <laughs> so the rules of the uh, and, uh, rules of engagement. You can't. You, you can only say in so many words no once, except in this situation. I'm going to say no at least twice, just to harass them just a little times. bit. No, well, usually say three, depending on the group. But depending on the group, how many times you can say, well, no, I still want to think about it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. But general rule right now, just because of the size of the group, just one object, like, yeah, well, I don't think I want to list with you because, and you'll see that on page 66 and the pages after that, a handful of those can be answered. But here's the deal. So let's 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 stay on this. So we demonstrate this. We're gonna stay on the commission one, but you can't use that script and the one the Mike Ferry script that uh, is saying like you know if they can't stand up for you regarding their own worth. Sure. We'll let someone. We'll let. In fact, you know what? You come back and chat. Chat. That's number ten. You ready? It's his first day. All chat has to do. All chat has to do is read the script. Chat has to read the script when he asks it back to you. But. Then once you do that, then you can ask someone like, uh, I don't know, let's see here, Joanne right there. Ask Joanne right there and ask her, how well, will you cut your commission? But she can't use now number 10. She has to come up with another reason why. So here's the deal. What we'll try to do is go three or four deep on every objection. And I would even encourage you then, Joanne, here's the deal. Why don't you ask someone like Jeff? Or is Mary Lynn still in here? Who else is in here? Jimmy? Ask Jimmy. Ask Jimmy. Right there. Oh, there's, oh, she's hiding. Ask Jimmy. Though. Ask Jimmy. Ask, he's from Boston, so he could take it. On. Say, you cut your commission. So ask him to cut your commission. So we're going to go. So I'm going to go to John. John's going to go chat. Chat will go over here. But normally we just let you pick. But I wanted to pick for you so there was no question of who got harassed the most this morning. So this will be John, and then Joanne can ask you, Jimmy, and then you have to come up. You can't use the Mike Ferry script. The Mike. You got to come up with like anything else but Mike Ferry script, right? So we got we'll have three deep by that point. So John, I know you want yeah. to. You know I appreciate you coming out. I, I like what you had to say, but I've got someone who's willing to do it for. I mean, I I mean, homes are selling like hotcakes. I mean, it's I mean four and a half percent. That's the most I'd be willing to pay. You. Okay, so George, what I hear you saying is that you want to discount the commission to get your home sold. Well, yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So let me ask you this. Is it important for you to get your home sold? Well, yeah, absolutely. That's the reason why we've had a number of agents out. Okay, and it's important for you to work with the company that sells a lot of homes? Well, that would be important to us, I think. Okay, and is it important for you to work with a national brand like Century 21 that has over 100,000 agents and is in 78 countries and, uh, and sells uh, over 800,000 homes a year? Well, maybe. I, I don't know how that helps me, but yeah. Well, it's a great question. George, let me ask you, how do you think that would help you? Working with a brand like Century 21 that sells that number of homes. Well, I presume it probably means they know what they're doing. Exactly. That's exactly what it means that they know what they're doing. So let me ask you this. It sounds like you want to work with an agent and a company that knows what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, of course. Absolutely. Okay, good. Then let's do the right thing and simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time that you want. I mean, won't that be great? No, that would be great. Perfect. See, look how nice I am to you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm all running out of time. So that's good. That's good. That's, good. that's great. Good job. All right. Good job. Yeah. All right, here we go. Just any other? Chad, no, number 10. Oh, okay. Commission. Oh, yeah. Stay on cut commission. Okay, so so Chad, uh, you know, another agent said that they would list their home for 5%. So are you willing to do that? 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm not. Um, I understand that the market is really hot right now, and uh, you have yeah. obligation. I'll tell you, just read number 10. Oh, well, you want me to <laughs> say all the things I do? I'm so excited you brought that up. No, are there any other guys? <laughs> 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 I'll give you an essay. Well, I guess not. Yeah, Chad, I guess not. I mean, if you're not willing to, we really want to work with you, so I guess. Right on, let's sign the contract. <laughs> <laughs> this is Chad's first day. <laughs> She can pick you up on the number two, and then we're going to put pressure on Jim. So you can use 10B. Oh, okay. I just yeah. thought that Yeah, you can use 10B. So, hey, well, you know, the other agent said they cut their commission. The other agent said they cut their commission. Are you willing to cut your commission for this? Yeah. And I'm so excited you brought that up. And no, but I'll, I can tell you why. I appreciate that. That, that makes me really, can I tell you why that makes me so nervous? Absolutely. Well, if other agents don't have the courage to stand up to you regarding their own work, how strong can they possibly be defending you and the price we set for your home? I have that courage. Do you feel I can sell your home? I think you could. Great. All we need to do now is simply sign the contract so I can help you get what you want in the time you want. Won't that be great? That's great. Good job. Awesome. Thank you. So I'll stay from B-Town. Let Marilyn help you to be brutal on him. Just brutal. Just okay, Jimmy. Oh, uh, you cut your commissions. I'm sorry. We actually don't cut our commissions. A lot of uh, co competition in the area actually does cut their commissions, but uh, I also feel that they actually cut the service that you provide at the same time, that they provide you at the same time. At Century 21 North Shore, we provide excellence in our service and make sure that you're covered the whole way through. We have our uh, managers that stand behind me and help me get through the process to make sure that you're getting the very best price with the very best terms and that we can get you uh, to where you're looking to go in the, in the quickest amount of time possible if that's your goal. Let's assume that's our goal. And, um, and I believe that uh, when you look at cutting a commission between 5% or 6%, you're talking about a small amount of money where in the big picture we may be able to, we will be able to show you a much greater <clears throat> amount of money in the, in, in the transaction itself. Closer, man. Sign contract. You want to sign this contract? <laughs> <laughs> yes! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so my, my, my favorite one, by the way, of, of my, my, besides no, any other questions, I mean, that's that's a pretty good one. It's always, I always say, Jimmy, this, so ask me to cut my commission. George, will you cut your commission? You know, that's a great question. How much did you want me to cut it? All of it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that, but, it, but what, what would you like? I mean, I, I charge 7%, so what would you like it to be? Uh, I, I would prefer to get it for 5%, like they're offering from call of Right. So here, here's, here's the challenge. Jimmy, do you realize the difference between 5% and 7%? Yes. What? 2%. You know, <laughs> you know, I know you're thinking that, but you know what the difference is? It's the difference of getting your home sold or not sold. See, the question is, is if I can't negotiate an additional 2 more percent on, the pro on your property, I really shouldn't even be in this business. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that I can negotiate two extra percent on the sale of your property? We're talking an extra five thousand dollars. At my skill set, do you believe I could do that? Well, uh, your skill set after I just saw this morning's training, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so let me help you get what you want the time you want. Does that sound great? I'll pay ten. All right, <laughs> All right. All right guys. Okay, thank you. We're gonna have a great time. So Okay, thank you, James. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so if you guys want to take a script, book, those who didn't get one, um, but did you get one, Mary Lynn? Anyone who, 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 who visitors, just to make sure there was a stack that was given here for a script. This is good, man. This is good. I'm excited. Bill, did you get yours? Okay, they are actually coming back in here, so...